Hey, Kevin here, top one to financial advisor, two-time author, one-time bestseller, and we are here to talk about the stock market. I will be brief today. It's been a long Monday, <laughs> but I want to go ahead and answer one of the questions that y'all had asked. This question actually comes from YouTube. Yes, we be on YouTube. <laughs> um, but this question wanted me to cover what's called the magic formula, and it is a very easy and simple trick that has shown to beat the stock market, but there are some some benefits and, and disadvantages. There's always pros and cons. So I want to describe those to you. So I'm going to be doing a very high level overview of what it is, how it works, and what I personally think about it. So the magic formula was created by Joel Greenblatt. I actually taught a section in a an older course years ago about how this works. And essentially, you take two ratios. Remember, ratios are you know taking financial data from a company, dividing it, and getting a number. And you are ranking those numbers for these specific companies. So I'm going to actually pull up an article and sort of skim some of it for you just so you know kind of what numbers we're talking about. So I'm set this aside and here we go. All right. So, and actually it might be better if I just share this with you. That way you can go and check out the article too, as opposed to me awkwardly reading it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share the screen. Give me one second here. And there we go. All right, so what is the magic formula uh, for investing? Again, it's from Professor Professor Joel Greenblatt, who used to teach at Columbia. I don't know if he's still there or not, as you can see here. And from his experiments from 98 to 2009, and he had a returns of 24% by doing this. And basically, if you had invested $10,000 in 1998 and held it all the way through 2009, you had a million dollars by doing this. Now, there is one caveat in that people have not been able to recreate these exact numbers and get the numbers that he got. However, they did still find that it did beat the market. So what he does is take two calculations right here. This is earnings before interest and taxes divided by enterprise value. That's going to give you earnings yield. Now, do not freak out if you don't know what these terms are because you actually don't have to calculate them. There is a shortcut, but I do want to show you what, what they are. Earnings before interest and taxes is exactly what it is. What did your company make before you pay taxes? Enterprise value is... Uh, somewhat of a derivative. It's kind of like market capitalization, which is the number of shares times the current stock price. It is similar to that. And that's what give us, gives us our earnings yield. So that's formula number one. Formula number two, and again, you don't have to calculate these, but I'm not going into super depth detail and showing you math. Um, so again, uh, this is earned before interest in taxes. That's EBIT. Um, EBIT is what most people call it. Then you've got your fixed, your net fixed asset plus working capital equals return on capital. So that's the, the second equation. Then you do those two things and you rank them in order and they have to be above a certain market cap, meaning the company has to be uh, a certain size. I don't want to do this for really small companies. So I think the bar is like 50 million to start off with and you can kind of rank it up there. So here's a good thing. Let me take this off. The good thing is you do not have to calculate these numbers. When I use the magic formula, I do not calculate these numbers. Nobody has time for that, okay? So don't worry if you if those terms and the math threw you off, don't worry about that. You can actually go to magicformula.com and hit the screener and they'll do all that stuff for you and it ranks the companies. So the way that it works though, is it excludes, I think, financials and a few uh, foreign companies and it it asks you the way it's supposed to work is you will buy anywhere between 20 to 30 stocks on that list. You hold it for a year and then you sell, um, you sell the losers. I think you, and then you sell the winners after like week 53. So basically week 51, sell the losers. That's for tax reasons because 52 weeks is a year. So week 51, you sell the losers. You don't get taxed uh, or you can write some of those taxes off. And then week 53, really the first week of the new year, you sell the winners and then you start the process over. You run the scanner, buy 20 or 30, hold it for a year. Now, the way that this works also is that he says that you are really going to see results around year five or so. So it is a very, I wouldn't say very long term, but it is a long term strategy in that you're buying the stocks and you are just waiting for an entire year. You come back, you sell the losers, sell the winners, 
based on those, those timeframes. So that's how it works. Really simple, pretty good for, for new investors. And it's, it's really simple in that you just sit back, you do what the scanner says to do, and then you're good. But there are some disadvantages. Disadvantages meaning if you are looking to like increase your income, you're more of a, you want to be more trading focused, then there's nothing you can really do. Um, this is more of a, more of a long-term strategy. The uh, other part of it is not every stock that's going to be on the scanner is going to be good. Some are, some are not. So for example, I ran the scanner earlier today, right before this video, I just picked out the names of companies I actually recognize because depending on where you set that bar, whether it's 50 million or 200 million, depending on where you set it, you can get a bunch of companies that you've heard of, or you can get a bunch that you have never heard of. So again, this is not the most scientific way, but I pulled up companies that I actually heard of. And I'll show you how they did over the past year. So some of the companies that popped up and I'll show you what it looks, looks like as well. We have, I think this is AutoZone. I'm sorry, AutoZone. Academy Sports and Outdoors says it right here. Academy Sports and Outdoors over the last year, 147%, which is ridiculous. Not something I would have expected, but this was on the list. It, it, it had done well. Best Buy, you can see way down here near 5%, under 6% here. You've got Dish Network in purple. That's up 50%. And then the overall stock market over this time is up 25%. So only two stocks in this particular category from this companies I recognize that were on the list were above the stock market. Now, if you average these out, I would venture to guess because I got one at 147 and another at 50, that combined, these still beat the market. So there you go. You still beat the market. But again, he's he's advising that you do anywhere between 20 to 30 stocks. Remember, I told y'all that if you want to be diversified, you want to be somewhere between 20, 30 stocks. I said that too. Um, I just don't have a, a list or a generator to do this. But if you are a student investor toolkit, you do get my own list. Um, but it's not nearly this many. So here's what it looks like inside of his little... Uh, Thing. Again, it's, it's free if you want to use it, if you want to trust it or not. You can hit 30 stocks, you can hit 50 stocks. It says get stocks. And then you scroll through here and you're supposed to pick 20 to 30 of these. Some of these you may have seen. So here's Dick Sporting Goods. Now, early I did 20, so I didn't I didn't get all of these. You got CBS. Uh, just looking for ones I've Norton LifeLock, I've heard of. Vector, Viacom, Whirlpool. WHR. I want to see what that one is. Um, so again, you know, some of these might be great. Some of these might not be, but it's a really uh, simple WHR. Really sim simple strategy. Uh, would I recommend it for investors? I mean, you, you could. Like, I, I don't, if someone told me this is what they do, um, and this is how they invest. I'm not going to scoff at you. I'm not going to be like, oh my God, that's terrible. Um, I'm not, I'm also not going to say, oh my God, it's the most amazing thing ever. Um, it works. It's a disciplined approach. And that's what I do like about it in that, you know, what you are doing, you know, when you are selling and you know, when you are buying. So week 51, you sell the losers week 53, you sell the winners. You start the process over, you scan, you buy 20 to 30, you stick it out for an entire year. That, that works, right? Hopefully of the, you know, the 50 I was on that list, you get 20 or 30 of the best ones, right? Uh, so my, my investing philosophy is similar in that I buy, I come back and check in June and December. So there, there are some similarities, except my formula, I don't really have a formula like that, but there are some things that I do and my students do that we say, this is, these are the stocks we like. And these are the stocks that we don't like. So that's pretty much how it works. Uh, one critique of this is it doesn't include international companies, which international companies that you don't have on your list might be helpful for you. Um, another criticism, other than the long-term investing, um, which I don't really consider much of a criticism, is that you this particular list avoids all financial companies. So you wouldn't get in a year like this where these stocks are, are okay this year, um, a Goldman Sachs, maybe a Citigroup, maybe a Bank of America or any of the regional banks that I mentioned earlier, you don't have exposure to those. That may not be the biggest deal in the world. It'd be different if you told me it was tech, right? That would be a big problem. Um, so it, it really depends. I think it's it's solid. If you are a long-term focused person and you really want to be super, super hands-off, you can try it out for yourself. Sometimes I check out the list and see 
you know, which one of my stocks tend to, to cross over and correlate. Sometimes I have stocks that do, sometimes I have stocks that don't, um, and, it, and it really depends. Now, what I have not done, um, which I would like to do at some point, is compare how my list and how my stocks compare to the magic formula. I don't know. I know that at least over the last few years, mine has also beaten the S&P, the S&P 500, which what is that worth? We don't know, right? So uh, we'll, we will definitely see and, and continue to compare. So that is it for me. Wanted to explain what it was. Thank you for asking such a great question because we get to do great videos. If you have other questions, companies or things that you want me to compare or explain, feel free to type those in the comments. I will add it to our list and we will make sure that we can cover it. All right, that's it for me. Talk to you guys later.